Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Today we are going to do a MA3 on PC crash course. We're going to set up a full show from nothing, um, and we're going to get it up and running, patched, get some effects in there, maybe do some time code. Um, so whether you are switching over from MA2 or you've never touched any pro MA product before, this is for you. Um, a few quick notes before we get started. I am on MA3 uh, version 1.4.2.1, which is the latest version at this time. Um, they are working on a version 1.5 that's going to be coming out in the next few months. So I'll do an update to this video with all of the lovely features that MA3 version 1.5 will bring out. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications button, and that way you will be the first to know about that. And also all of the other MA3 tips and tricks that I will be putting out um, over the next uh, few weeks. All right, so let's get started here. When you first open MA3 on PC, whether you're opening it on your PC or on Mac, you're going to see something like this. It's going to look blank and scary, but it really isn't, and we're going to build our show uh, from this pretty easily, actually. Just a quick uh, kind of overview of this workspace here. Over here, you have more like um, general like functionality tools and stuff. If you click this power icon here, it is going to you know ask if you want to shut down the console um, or you know in this case the program on my computer um, if you want to save it or what if you tag this here you're going to get to the settings we're going to get into this in a little bit uh, this is your like a command interface if you had a physical console um, it would the keys on it would look similar to this and would be uh, laid out similarly uh, here you have like master speed controls like I said, we're not going to go into any particular detail uh, on these. Here are your playback controls, and we'll store some stuff in here a little bit later. This is where you can set different monitors. This is the help button. As you see, it puts help in the command line here, and you can tag on something, and it will uh, it will get, get you some help there, which is kind of cool. All right. Um, over here, the at, this is your programmer, so you can put at full, at zero, cut programmer, copy programmer, all that kind of stuff. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Uh, you have the screen lock key here. It will, if you tag it, it's going to put your screen in this scary dust locked mode. Uh, to get out of it, you're going to do a little orientation here. Uh, click in the top left corner of your screen, the bottom right corner, the top right corner, and the bottom left corner, and boom, you're out. Yay. Okay, this section here is your programmer. This is where you are going to manipulate values of fixtures. Um, and create effects and all that fun stuff. And then over here are different views. Um, so if I type a fixture view, you're going to go to a fixture sheet, presets, it's going to load a preset view, sequence sheet, phaser, a whole bunch of different things. And these are all customizable, and we're going to talk about that uh, in a moment. Okay, so now we are going to go and we are going to patch some fixtures. If you don't know um, about uh, what DMX patching is, um, you're going to need to know that for this next part. I won't really go into it. But there's plenty of great resources um, available, and I'll probably make a video about that at some point as well. All right, so you're going to click this icon here. You're going to go to Patch. Okay, so now we're in the Patch menu. Um, you are going to see here there are lots of different fixtures um, and different, uh, you know, you have GDF fixtures here as well. Um, we are going to go to MA2 because, so the MA3 fixture library is still being built up, and it's mostly at this point just 3D uh, objects here which are somehow in the patch um, so I wouldn't really bother doing it in here unless you had like some of these specific fixtures just grab it from MA2 uh, you can type in if you know what fixture you have you can just type it in here so I know I have a Fairlight I'm gonna be using Fairlight 2600 profiles one of my favorite fixtures I'm gonna name it just 2600 quantity for this demo we're just gonna use 10 this is gonna be a pretty small rig Fixture ID. Okay, so your fixture ID is very important because this is a uh, thing that you're going to be typing in the command line. Um, you can leave this at one if you wanted. Um, I typically do mine in the hundreds, so I'm going to do 101 um, because if I decide that I want to have more fixtures, um, you know, like a wash unit instead of a profile unit, I would put them at 201 or something um, starting from there. So this will start at 101, the next fixture will be 102. On, you know onwards here's a DMX patch we'll start it sure at um, universe one channel one all right so hit apply and now you see our fixtures 
are now in here. Great. Yay. Okay. And we might only use nine of these, depending on how we want to set this up, but I'll patch 10 for now. All right. So now click the X key here. It's going to say keep changes. Yes, we, we do. And now if we go back into, you know, we're back into our fixture sheet, you now see that there are fixtures patched. And also there's more stuff down in the uh, programmer here. These uh, pallets here, they all just kind of appeared. So this is great. We are now where we want to be to start um, setting up some of our groups and presets. Okay, so now let's, um, let's let's start some groups let's let's get some of the stuff going okay so now I want to modify this screen um, I don't want this stuff here so I want to delete uh, the picture sheet and this programming parts so in order to change that and delete it I'm gonna need to click the MA icon here hit delete window same here um, and this can scare some people when they're starting out because now supposedly I've just deleted it out of my fixture sheet right but you actually haven't if you go back here it's gonna reappear there um, and we're going to store uh, this in a second. But now I'm going to create uh, a group pool. So in order to add anything into here, you're going to just tap anywhere in the screen that's empty. Uh, there are lots of different things here, add windows. Uh, we're going to go to the pool and we're going to go to groups. Wow, that's a lot of groups. We don't need that many. Let's drag it over here, make it nice and neat. And I'm going to go over here and just uh, make that eight and you and to change the size of anything like that you just you go here in the bottom right corner of the object and you can make it whatever size you want which is kind of cool okay so we have some groups this is great this is going to kind of be the foundation of our programming screen that we're going to customize now we need to save this so that way we can recall it or else it's going to disappear as soon as we click one of these so to do that go over to the command section hit store and now go over here click this and it will you know let you title it so i'm going to call this my screen hit okay and boom now we can go to any of these other ones go back to my screen and it will have this here yay okay so now let's store a group with our fixtures that we just put in so we started them if you remember at fixture id 101 it's super easy i'm going to go over to the command line here which is where you enter all of your commands i'm going to type in 101 uh through that's a, a shortcut for through. 10, uh, no, 110. Okay, boom. If you see now we have a, a number here. Now I'm going to go store in the command line. I'm typing that, or you could also just hit the store key here, but I'm typing store there. And then I'm going to tap in my empty palette here. Boom, I have a group. Hit the space bar of your keyboard, and now you can name it. So I'm going to name this VL2600. Boom. Okay. So now to get rid of that, I'm gonna hear I'm gonna hit clear three times, clearing it. Three times will clear everything out of your programmer. We'll talk about that more of that in a second. So now we need to get our 3D window up and going because we want to be able to see what we're working with. So to do that, let's start by going over to the 3D section. All right. Looks a little scary, a big blank screen. It's actually pretty quick to set up. There are quicker ways to set it up if you use Vectorworks, um, but because this isn't a Vectorworks tutorial, we're not going to talk about that. So to set up your fixtures in this 3D space so you can see what they're doing, uh, go over here to Mode, click Setup. Great. Okay. Now let's go over to Command Line and type in 101. I'm not having to type in Fixture in front of that because it automatically has a mastered fixture there. Select it, great. You can kind of see it selected right there. Now we need to move this in our 3D space. I'm gonna move this up. The Z axis here is how high the fixture is. So 12, 12 meters, boom. It's up there, you can see it now. And now I'm gonna move it to the, let's say I'm gonna move it to the left a little bit. Negative, mm, let's do negative six. Boom, now it's over there. Okay, now I can go to the next fixture or I don't, I don't even have to type that in, I can just hit next, boom. And now we can do the same thing, 12, let's go, negative four, next, 12, negative two, next, 12, zero, you can see I'm kind of spacing these out, specific way, it was already at zero, so I didn't really need to do that, um, next, 
Now we're going to go 2 because we're going positive. We're going to the opposite side. So now this is going to go 12, 4. One more here. Next. 12, negative. Uh, not negative, 6. Boom. Okay. So now we have our fixtures here. I've only actually used 7 even though I patched 10. So why don't we do, let's do some others um, while we're here next. All right, so with this one, I'm actually going to just flip them around on the ground. So um, I have a ground fixture, so let's put this at negative three there. And now I need to flip it so that way it's, uh, you know, oriented towards the sky or the top. So I'm gonna go to rotation X, hit 180, boom. Now it's up there. Next, I can just go to 180. Uh, next, now I'll go to 183. Okay, great. So now go clear, and you can see all of our fixtures are orientated here in this 3D window. So now if we go back to my screen and we tap over here, go to common 3D, great. Now we have our 3D window all set up. I can select them, you see them there. We can put them at full. And they're working great okay so now let's record some presets really presets are used pretty much every time you make any sort of cue or effect or anything like that um, it's a quick and easy way of selecting colors positions all that kind of stuff so let's clear all this out go over here under groups and you're gonna go to presets here and you'll see all these different preset options here I'm gonna select dimmer and we're gonna make eight of those uh, we'll put position next, also eight of those, color, gobo, probably actually going to want uh, double color and double gobo, I'm going to do some beam ones here, and we'll want some focus ones. Okay, so let's store some, um, let's store some intensity, some dimmer presets, so select our fixtures, Go here, 100. Fixtures are at 100, we're gonna store this now. So type store into the command line and then go over here, boom. See how lovely that was? Now we can go onto that and just label that 100%. And now we could go, we could do 75 there. Now we could um, store that. That's 75%. Then we can make a zero one as well store that there zero percent oh my gosh and i'll uh we, we can make those as well at a later bit but for the sake of time let's move on okay so now let's do some color palettes we'll do position palettes in a moment i know i'm skipping those so select them put them at full Let's go over to our color picker here. Um, I added that in when you guys are not looking, but basically you can just tap here, go to comment and go to color picker. So now let's go over here, red, that looks amazing. Type store, let's go over here, yay. Uh, let's do, ooh, green, I know, I know. We don't like, we don't like green, but we kind of do, it's a love-hate relationship. We'll do a blue. See how I'm going over here every time it's instinct. I want to hit the key. And over there. Sometimes it can be quicker. Let's do like a pink there. Uh, should we do like a yellow? These aren't great color palettes, guys. Set up better ones. Uh, let's just do like a white as well. Boom. Okay, so those are our color palettes. I'm leaving some extras here for effects. Should we want to do those? Now we can clear all those out select them, put them at full, and we can go through basically every single color palette here, and it will all work, which is kind of cool and fun. Okay, so now let's do some gobo palettes, so let's clear this all out. Select your fixtures, go to gobo, and we probably put them at full, so you can see what we're doing, and let's go over here. Now we're going to scroll along to our first gobo here, take a look at that, that's a gobo, wow, okay, so now let's go store bam now we can uh, scroll along to our next one let's 
store. The next one. Store. These are just kind of like all the gobos in this wheel here. Ooh, that's an interesting one. This is the default load. Store. And this means that you won't have to go into here and be doing this every single time that you want a gobo. You can just select it and you will be able to quickly get it, which is needed in programming. Store there. Now let's go all the way back and do an open. Okay, great. And that one doesn't have it, but let's just open. Great. Okay, okay, so now we have those. Let's do a few others for the gobos. Um, so what you can do here is we can select a gobo and then we can rotate it if we go into there. See how we did that? Take a look at how that cool that rotation is. I'm actually not going to set the palette for this. You can. Let's maybe just, um, but I, I, yeah, I'm not going to set a rotating gobo palette for now. For simplicity's for simplicity sake. But you can if you want and you probably should if you're doing a show. So we see if there's anything in here. Yeah, this is another wheel of gobos as well that you can make palettes for. All right, so now let's do some beam palettes. So let's put it full, we'll go over to our beam. Uh, this beam here basically um, means iris. So we can do like a zero iris. Store, boom, oh, take a look at that, hang on. Okay, so I made a mistake here because I want this preset number one and this is preset number nine. So I need to delete this. The easiest way to do that is to go over and hit the oops key. Boom. Now it's gone and it's fixed. It's amazing. The oops key is your friend. Use it every time you make a mistake. It will quickly undo it. Um, and that's very helpful. Uh, zero percent. Then we'll just do like a full one. There. Great. That's 100 percent. Okie dokie, put those out, select them again, go over to focus, 100%, we'll do like a, uh, sure, let's do a 0% zoom, store that, um, see, there I did it again, need to be at preset number 0, please, Zero percent zoom, uh, clear. I guess I didn't need to do that, did I? I don't know why I did that. Store it into here, and now we have 100%. Zoom. Great. All right, so now we want to save this view because I don't want to leave this. So I'm going to go over here, clear. I'm going to hit store. I'm going to go over to my screen, hit OK. And now I can go back into that and have everything. All right, so now let's set some position palettes. I save these till last. Go to position, let's go to tilt. Take a look at that little mistake there. The fixtures go opposite directions. What are we going to do? All right, this is a little easy uh, and quick thing to fix. So we want these bottom fixtures to go in the same direction. Go to set up here, clear everything, clear everything out, select those fixtures on the bottom, and um, uh, basically we're just going to rotate them. So if I put them at full, you should see where did they here? Yes, yeah, set up. Wrong one. Did that work? Did I do that right? I don't know if I did. No, I didn't. <laughs> Negative 180. Wow, this is trickier than I thought it was going to be. There we go. Wow. Okay. So now I flipped them around. <laughs> you guys got to go on a little journey with me there. Okay. So now that they've finally been flipped around, clear them out. Now we can go on with our position pellets. All right, so tilt them. We'll do like, uh, let's do that. Store, boom, out. 
And then let's do one where it's more like in. Yeah, let's do that. Store in. Great. Okay, so now let's do some stuff with a line. A line is a function that is very helpful when you are uh, is need to spread out parameters across different fixtures, and it can create some pretty cool looks. So let's select these fixtures up here. Go to position. Uh, let's just go to out here. Nice. Uh, uh, there we go. So I'm going to go over here to the align button, hit it once, see the little icon there. And now I'm going to grab this, take a look at that. Able to spread those out. Like, I can fan them in like that. I can fan them out. We'll do that there. I'll fan them out. Looks kind of cool. Store. Fan out. Fan is what they call it in ETC. Um, EOS, which is why I'm calling it that and not line. And I like the word fan better than line. Anyway, all right. And this is fan in. Awesome. And that will create some super cool kind of um, looks that we can uh, we can use. Okay, so now let's do some quick effects. So there are two ways to create effects in MA3. Recipes and phasers. Recipes are so cool and awesome that they kind of deserve their own video um, because there's so much you can do with them. So I'm really just going to focus on phasers here. Um, and we'll create some super quick effects in there. So let's put, let's take our fixtures here. Let's just put them in their out preset there. And now I'm just going to select the top ones here. All right, I'm gonna go and create a little intensity effect. I'm gonna go over here to my dimmer, and I'm gonna put this at zero. Okay, great. So now, I'm gonna go over to this little step bar here. See how it says one slash one? I'm gonna tap this arrow key, and now it says two slash one. So we are now on step two of the effect, and I'm gonna go to 100, boom. And now take a look, we have a little effect running. Okay. So now let's uh, let's modify this a little bit. So you can see here you have multiple um, uh, editing capabilities. All these ones in purple here um, are for phasers. So let's go to speed. Uh, the default is 60 or whatever you set it as, but we can make it quicker if we wanted. We can do an 80. That's a little quicker, and that's in BPM. Now let's go to phase. So phase allows you to evenly distribute um, the parameters around. So let's go 1 through 360. Take a look at that. Wow. And then you can adjust things um, like the transition time. So let's do a zero transition time. Take a look at that. You can see now it kind of steps in and out. And that's kind of cool. Okay, so now I want to store that. So store. And I'm going to store it as an intensity preset. And that's kind of cool. Do you see how it um it has a like a, a half split? So it shows you there are two steps there. So now if I put that out, I can select those fixtures and I can put it at that. Okay, so interesting, something interesting to note here is that these bottom fixtures, even though I selected them, uh, they were stored because they were a hundred percent. So, which is why this is a little bit more than half. Um, so you have to make sure that when you are storing, so you can see here, even when I select them, that they only, um, they still have two steps, even though they're not programmed. So you could remove that, right? You could leave that off. Or you could create an effect there as well. So that's kind of cool. All right. Now let's do. Oopsie. Let's do. Um, let's do a color effect. Okay. So out. Let's go over to color. Let's do like a red, and then in step two, let's do a blue. Great. Take a look at that. Okay. Awesome. So now let's go to phase. Let's add a red fade time of that, and then let's add a blue fade time of that. Take a look at that. That looks kind of cool. All right, and now let's store that. And you can create phasers with pretty much any um, anything, which is kind of cool. Oh, oopsie, I didn't do that. I got store. Boom. And that's how you create phasers. So now that we have some groups, presets, effects stored, Let's start creating a cue list. Let's create a sequence for a show. Now, if you're running a show, um, there are lots of different ways to do this. Sometimes you might want to have lots of sequences running, um, you know, and then you kind of mix it live, uh, especially if you're on a console. Um, 
sometimes you might, you know, uh, you have the full show programmed from start to finish and you're just hitting the go button. It really depends. I'm going to set up a cue list um, because that's how I tend to set up my shows, at least right now. Um, but there are lots of other ways to do it. So we're now going to slightly modify this because uh, I want this space here. So I'm now going to delete this uh, and I'll move this like there. Okay. So now. All right, we are going to go, and we are going to go add a window, and we're going to add a sequence. Okay, great. And then over here, we're going to add playback. It's very small, but we don't need a big. Okay, so now let's store this. Great. Okay. All right, so now let's let's store our first cue. So. Um, I'm going to, I'm actually going to just select the top fixtures here. Ah, boo. This is going to select the top fixtures here. We're going to put them at full. I'm going to put them at their uh, fan out preset. I'm going to put them in blue. Throw a gobo in there. With, shall we say, 0% uh, zoom. That looks kind of cool. All right. And then I'm going to take my bottom fixtures at full out. I'll put them at like a yellow. I kind of like that. Yeah. Looks kind of cool. OK. So now that we have that, let's say we, we want this look. Um, we are now going to hit store. And we're going to go over to one of our playback keys. Actually, it's probably easier here just to go to here. Um, because they're much bigger. So let's say we're going to store that in here. Uh, there. There we go. Okay. So um, now, and if you were on a physical console, you could just tap the key that you wanted it to go. Okay. So now we have our sequence stored here. You see here how it has sequence two. Um, if I double tap that here, I'll go to the um, sequence like editor page where I can like have a little bit more. Um, control over it, I can adjust what the key does. So if I want it instead of it to go plus, I want it to go minus or like learn rate or learn speed or whatever. We'll talk about that uh, in a later video. So I now have this and I want to get this sequence onto here because I want to be able to see it and edit it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to look over here, see how it says sequence two. I'm going to go to my command line. I'm going to hit sequence two, please over here and boom sequence two and now I can name this so I'm gonna hit the space bar and I'm gonna name it one great okay and you we can add a whole bunch of data here let's say I want a fade time of this of three uh, I can go q1 time three please and boom and now we have okay all right so now let's run it let me go over here to this little button here and take a look at that so now we have our first queue running if I go and clear everything out of the programmer it is still there because it's in our queue. All right, so now let's store a second queue. Let's say in the second queue, I'm going to have uh, these fixtures turn off, and these fixtures are going to turn to blue themselves. All right, store, and now I don't even have to tap anything. I can go store queue two time, and I'm going to add my fade time or whatever, uh, time two, please. And I have two, great, and now I have two queues, so I can go and I can run that. Uh, let me clear my programmer. And now I can go hit the go button and take a look at that. It ran it. Awesome. Okay, so now let's store a third queue where these are going to go out, and those are going to come to full in their fan in palette uh, in the red say with that gobo on it out of 100% zoom okay yeah all right um, I'm not gonna go store Q three time two time I'm hitting it again at three okay so when I hit Q once I mean time once it adds Q fade so that's a fade time and I tapped it again so I'm also adding a delay time store and a delay time is going to be the time before it actually runs. So 
if you see here, fade to delay three. So if I hit this now, uh, well, actually, I'm going to clear this out. And if I go um, here, it's going to count down my delay before it runs. And there we go. Now it runs. OK. Now that looked a little messy. Um, because I don't want my fixtures, if we uh, we go back to the top and we see how it runs here, see, notice how those fixtures fade out. And I don't want them to just uh, like fade in like this. I want them to just reappear there. I don't want to see that movement or that color change. So now I have to go and I have to add an MIB. MIB stands for move in black, and it means um, that it will automatically uh, move the fixtures in this queue to that position so that way you don't get that nasty transition so i'm going to add a queue early to both of these so now i will go to this one and now see how this works those fixtures fade out awesome okay and now i'm going to hit go again it'll run that delay time and then take a look at that it's nice and neat all right so now let's say i want to add um an effect to this and a phaser Gonna hit that there. Take a look at that. And I'm gonna select those fixtures on there. Put them at zero. Actually, zero for both. Great. Okay. And now I'm gonna store this. Store Q4 time two, please. And if we go back over here, you'll see it created a little part here. That means that there's an effect in there. So we can hide that if we wanted. And it's four. Great. Okay, so now. Oh, did I not add a fade time to that? I thought I did. Um, oh, yes. So, uh, whenever uh, whenever you add a fade time to a, um, a queue that just has an effect in it, it applies it to this part, part 100, not the actual queue. Okay, so now if we clear this out, and we run it, take a look at that. All right, and now to stop the effect in the queue, if I want to stop the effect running, I will select the fixtures and I'm going to go into here and I'm going to hit stop, please. And now it has stopped it and I can now put them at 100, store Q5 time 2, please. And now if we clear this out and we run it, it will stop the effect. All right, so that's the basis of storing queues. It's very, very simple. Um, you create your look in the programmer, you store it, and then you add uh, any MIBs, any moving blacks that you need. You can add delays, uh, times. You can also create follow queues. Uh, so if I make this a follow queue and I go to the start of the list, the same, I'm gonna go there. Then as soon as this queue here is done running, it will, um, immediately start the next queue. So uh, there we go. I didn't even hit the button, it just automatically ran. So lots of cool functions you can do um, with effects and everything. Play around with it. This is not a deep dive. I will do a deep dive at some point uh, into uh, effects and cues and sequences and all that fun stuff. Okay, so before we sign off here, let's talk about one more thing, time code. Um, time code essentially lets you run cues sequences timed so that way you don't have to be hitting the go button every single queue you want to go um unlike uh, any major concert tour anything like that is time coded the whole thing mostly um so that way those you know uh the blinders go on it for every single kick drum beat or you know whatever so here we're just gonna make a little time code with this i'm gonna use internally generated time code usually you would use an external source uh, so let's just go over to our preset here. Let's delete all of these. I will make this our time code menu. So we're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go to uh, time codes here. We just need one really time code slots. You get eight time code slots by default. You can add more. Um, and then we're going to go with this time code view. Did they put that in there? They didn't, no. Okay, so time code view is there. And now we're gonna store this. Boom. Time code. Ah, okay. Great. And actually,
actually, let me put play back up here. Ew. Let's rearrange this. So we'll put our playback here. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we need a time code stored in here. So we're going to go over here, store, bam, time code. I'm going to label test. Great. Okay. So now let's go into our time code here. This is our time code window. Nothing in here right now. So let's go over to the time code key. Boom. I just hit one, which is test. And this is an internally generated time code. Uh, if you go in here, you can edit more. Um, and I'll talk, I'll do a video all about time code and stuff in there. So now let's go to mode setup. Okay. So now we are in the recording mode for the time code, um, which means that we will be able to store uh, cues along this time code frame. So I actually, I usually start my time code at 10 seconds, so I'll just let it play out. So let's say if we go back to here, um, let's say we want to get rid of this. All right, I'm going to go off cue, please. And now we don't have our cue running, which is great. And so now we can go back into time code. We can shrink this at our 3D window here. So that way we can see what we're doing. Oh, and look at that. It, uh, right, and now I'm going to store this. Okay. Let's start this time code. So um, I'm going to start recording the time code by hitting this button here. You'll see now it's red and it's recording the time code. I can also stop it in the point um, just by hitting that again. Or you could even use the keys down here if you wanted. Um, then I could go back to the start. Um, I could play it back. I can pause it temporarily, uh, I can keep it moving, and of course now it's run to the end. So uh, let's start recording this, and we're just going to um, be running these cues. I haven't programmed anything extra. Okay. And we'll start it at uh, 10 seconds. You can see the clock here. Okay. All right, so I'm running our first cue. You can see how it put that there. I'm running our second queue now. Now I am running the next queue, but it has a delay on it, if you remember. Next queue. And then out like that. And off. Okay, great. So now let's go and clear everything out. And we can now go back to the start of our time code. We can go to playback. Let's go um, off Q actually. So we go to that. And now let's play this back. And I'm not going to touch anything. All right. So we started this at 10 seconds. It just gives you a little bit of time to get set up. Here we go. There's Q1. Nice. Now that'll fade out. Now our next cue, here we go. And boom. And that's the end of our time code. So you can see how this is a really powerful tool. Using the internally generated time code is super easy and I would recommend that if you are just you know trying to learn it. Um, but I'll do another video about how to use external time code and how to do all of that. Uh, but that's really the basics of how to use time code. You create sequences and then you store it, um, you know, kind of going along with your time code. And you can uh, restore things as well. So you, if you, you know, needed to just a kick drum beat on one record and then the next record you like get your effects in there or something, you can do that and it's super, super easy and fun. Okay, so I hope you learned something. Um, this was a very basic crash course, just kind of going over the uh, some of the major features of MA3, but there's so much that we haven't even touched on, like macros, um, we haven't talked about magic, MA tricks, we haven't really talked about phasers, um, we need to dive into recipes, so much more um, that we will, uh, you know, we'll go over time code um, more in depth, so much more to come, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, and you'll be the first to know about those. I'll be making at least one video a week on this, and I'll just have some other fun lighting stuff um, in there as well. So be sure to hit subscribe and uh, tag the notifications bell to get notified. 
Alright, so thanks so much for joining in, and I hope to see you guys soon.